Yo, it's Zero, and this is What If Naruto Was the King of Dragons Part 3. I hope you guys are enjoying this series, as this is where things will start to get serious. In the last part, Naruto sensed another person like him when returning home to the Leaf Village, which caused him to go out and find Gara. As he now holds him in the air, getting ready to drain his tail beast from him and combine it with himself. But before any of that, make sure to like the video and subscribe to show me that you guys like this type of content and want more parts of this series. And without any more wait at all, let's get started. Go, 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 let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick. I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Yo, bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most. I tell her little bitch, she's so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me. Niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers. And you know 30k got the mop. Sacked up, yeah, I got them knots. Act up, get your body in a box. Told the demon, you know how I rock. Naruto holds up Gara into the air and gets ready to finish him off. But someone stops him. Naruto noticed the presence of Zetsu, so he lets him go. After this is when he meets up with a strange creature who tells him that the war will start in the very last portion of the Chunin exams, as this would excite Naruto, who complies not to kill Gara before then. Naruto heads off and goes back home. As he well, as he walks into the Hokage office, and Haruzen is shocked to see him back so soon. Shut your mouth, old man. You can take this back. I don't need it anymore. It was a little fun being a pesky ninja, but I'm a warrior down to my core, and you can't rank me by that. But but surely you can't mean that, Naruto. The Chunin exams were coming up very soon. It's a battle between villages for the younger generation to climb the ranks. Surely you want to participate and show off. Oh, is it? And do you truly believe that any of those weaklings could match, well, could even touch a hair on my head? As if, I'd slaughter them whenever I please. Don't ask me about the matter again, or consider your life done for. Haruzen, scared, puts his head down, and the door was then kicked open by a small boy, declaring that he would defeat the dragon. Konohamaru jumped at Naruto and attempted to kick him for Haruzen. Everything would slow down as it would move in slow motion. As Naruto would dodge the kick, and with... Well, with a swipe of his hand, he slices the throat of Konohamaru. Haruzen screamed out, watching his grandson's body drop to the floor and start to leak blood as he wasn't moving at all. Haruzen stood up, and Naruto tilted his head back while tasting the blood of the child. With a sinister smile, he laughed and told the old man, fight him now if he wants to, but it'll just end up the same way. Haruzen then took a step towards Naruto, but couldn't feel his arm as well, couldn't feel his arm at all. It seems in your old age, you forgot how to conceal your bloodlust. I was hoping to save this for later, but who cares? Naruto then uses the severed arm of the Hokage to stab through his chest and kill him. When the next person walked into the Hokage office, all they saw was the dead Kage and his grandson. But who would be walking in? That's simple. Team 7 walked in seeing what happened. Kakashi was angered and stared at Naruto, who was laying on the Hokage's desk. Why? Why would you do this, Naruto? Killing the Hokage is treason. You know that, right? You can't just... But his voice was then cut off by the hand of Sasuke that pierced his chest. Sasuke. No, Sakura would scream. But Naruto picked her up by her mouth and then held her in the air as he threw her, ne well, he threw her into the wall right next to Sasuke. As Uchiha stared down at her, he then heard the voice of Naruto. Go ahead and kill her. If you truly want to gain the power that you so wish for, kill her right now as that'll be the catalyst as you've already killed one person close to you, that being Kakashi. And if you don't, I'll do it myself and make you watch. But I'd like you to make your moves quick as you know I don't like waiting. Sasuke looks at the girl who was truly frightened at the sight. And even though, well, even, well, hold on. She was frightened at the sight, or what could even happen right now in this moment, as he keeps moving forward with lightning in his palm. She begins to scream out, and Kakashi, with his last bit of strength, tries to use a jutsu to save her. But his body is then stomped by Naruto. Just die already. You're such a bother. 
Hey Sasuke, you finished over there? Uchiha was silent, but turned around slowly, revealing his eyes were now the Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto smiled as he told Sasuke that they were heading out to look for someone. Orochimaru, inside his base, was getting a disguise ready to sneak into the leaf, but the body of Haruzen dropped to his feet. Well, I wonder who did that. He turns around with a smile to see Naruto looking at him. Just the boy's presence alone sent chills down this man's smile. Well, spine. And when you actually think about it, it's insane that it could do that, as Orochimaru is one of the most twisted characters we get to see in this story. So the fact that he's even nervous or even scared when talking to Naruto says a lot. To what do I owe the pleasure to the great Dragon King? Gather as many as you want. I plan to take over. Oh, excuse me. It's quite a boring subject. But I plan to take over the leaf at the break of dawn tomorrow. Orochimaru waved it off and the two would begin to walk away. But as they turned around, the Sanin would try to grab Sasuke, seeing it as his chance to get an Uchiha body. But Naruto stepped in front of him and ripped off the arm of Orochimaru. What a fitting trick for a snake like you, says the boy who killed the man who tried to raise him. Let's make this clear right now. He was never present in my life. And if I didn't kill him, you would have done so yourself. Anyway, make, sh make sure not to be late or the fun is going to start without you. As they leave, Naruto tells Sasuke his plan to kill all the three legendary Sanin. It will be the ultimate test of his strength. And Sasuke says that he'll take care of one of them for Naruto. But Naruto lets him know that that's beyond his power right now to do so. He's actually taking Sasuke somewhere to train for a long time. It's a dislocated location that only Naruto has access to. And he leaves Sasuke with supplies and a clone of himself to train with. Once you defeat this clone... With a small percentage of my strength, you'll be able to kill your big brother. Sasuke nods and Naruto leaves the area. He walks back into the leaf later and makes it by morning as no one was ready well, no one was ready to invade yet. And no one was here. It was just Naruto. Of course, Orochimaru would wait and leave it for him. He doesn't want his troops to get injured and he wants to save his strength just in case Naruto was plotting something. It makes sense he would think that way as Naruto was plotting something. Well, I guess I'll get this party started by myself. Naruto jumps into the air, turning into a dragon, unleashing attacks within the village. This destroys part of the walls that surround the village and leads to the destruction of many of its buildings. All the Jonin who were in the village run out to see the monster known as the Dragon King. Naruto goes back into his human form and lands in the center of the village as he's surrounded by Jonin, Chunin, Ambu, and even some Ginin who were there. Anyone who could fight was about to attack Naruto until they heard a loud explosion from the other side of the village. Orochimaru and the sound, sound or actually, was it sound or grass? I actually can't remember. I think it was both, but I think it was more of the grass that he had at this time, or that's what it was called. But they were invading as well, which really got the blood of Naruto boiling, seeing this as his chance as he uses his intense aura to push those around him away as he runs in that direction. Orochimaru is seen killing another man, but then dodging a punch from Naruto. And as, and now, the sound four surrounded the blue-haired boy as well. So it seems our fated battle was set to happen today. Well then, Naruto, prepare to die. Naruto rips off his cloak. Dragons roar. A loud scream is then heard throughout the entire village as the sound breaks the eardrums of those close to Naruto and makes those far away lose their hearing in their ears for just a moment. As now, Orochimaru uncovers his ears and then blocks the fist of Naruto. This punch was enough to just break his bones upon impact. The sound four would all try to help their master and attack Naruto, but... He wiped them out in a flash with just a wave of his hands. Even Kimimaru couldn't do nothing, couldn't do anything, as his bone blades couldn't even pierce Naruto's skin, who just laughed it off. The blue-haired boy grabs him by his head and then crushes it. The sounding in response summons multiple snakes that all come crashing down at Naruto. 
The boy then transforms into a dragon and rips him all apart, smiling as he does so. Using his large size, he then squashed Orochimaru below his feet, but the Sanin bit the boy, trying to inject poison. However, the scales of the dragon were too strong, leading to his death at the hands slash feet of Naruto. And here is where I'm going to make a change to something I said early on in this story. When I was talking about the tail beast in the beginning created by the Sage of Six Baths, I actually want to make them all dragons so I feel that'll fit the story way more, with Naruto still being the strongest one of course. That's all though. So back to the story, Garo will be hunted down by Naruto within the village, and his dragon, or Shukaku, was forced to emerge, as now he was a sand dragon. Naruto smiled, transforming as well. The steps of the dragons. Well, the two dragons soar into the sky, and Shukaku slams Naruto through the air. Then, he grabs him with sand that's able to stab through his wings. Naruto is actually quite surprised by this, and I know you guys might be wondering, wait, why is he actually struggling here when he's still the strongest? Naruto hasn't had any experience fighting other dragons like Shukaku has throughout his long lifetime, and even though he has the power of Acnologia, he doesn't have, well, he doesn't have the best grasp on his abilities. He's basically a powerhouse that needs to learn and hold his skill, learn and hone his skills. Naruto retaliates, using stars to cast beams of light to pierce Shikaku. Naruto then rushes in and slams his head into the dragon's chest, sending it down into the village. Shikaku crashes down, but is able to use sand to bind Naruto as well, which leads to them both going to a head-on-head -head battle with physical attacks, which definitely is not what you want to do against a powerhouse like Naruto. After a couple of minutes, Gara is seen laying on his back while Naruto stands over him with bruises and cuts all over his body. However, Naruto is smiling. This, this is what he wanted. This is what he desired. A battle that pushed him to his limits and forced him to evolve through struggle. That's what he needs to do. One by one, he'll conquer all the dragons and take their powers, starting with this one. Naruto gets closer to Gara, but the sand stabs through his right side, leaving a chest. Well, no, not leaving a chest, leaving a hole in his chest. But it was too late, as Naruto took Shikaku and absorbed his power. I don't have a way to explain this, so let's just say it's one of Naruto's sealing abilities. Naruto begins laughing, feeling the power go through his body. But many of the ninja who were still alive then surround him and some of the members of the Nara clan use their clan jutsu to hold Naruto still, and the only reason it works is because of how tired he is. This is when Danzo looks towards Naruto and gets in his face. As he was about to speak, Naruto then jumped at him and headbutted him. The man fell to the ground in pain, and Naruto controls sand, pushing them all away. Soon after, he gets away from the village and lays down in a forest, letting all of his injuries heal. When he awoke, he was met by Black Zetsu, who asked him how well it went. Naruto then shows off some sand abilities, surprising the creature. How do you think it went? A voice from behind the trees then said, Looks to me like you went in way too fast and you were outmatched and you just got lucky. But that's just my assumption. Itachi Uchiha then walks from behind the tree, staring at Naruto. You really pissed me off, you know that? I can't wait till Sasuke kills you. Whatever, just make sure you don't die before the actual war starts as I see you're starting to get cocky and Pain notices that as well as his trust in you is diminishing. Hey Itachi, does it look like I care? And where is the second tailed beast at? Or the second tailed dragon? I believe near the cloud. Oh whoa, I had like a little voice crack there. I believe near the cloud and in the land of lightning. Naruto smiled while standing up and walked away from the two. Far away, we then see a much different Sasuke who sports multiple scars all over his body, along with sweat from his continuous training. I'm not done yet, he says while rushing at the clone of Naruto that was still training him and he looked quite bored. Naruto looks up towards the sky and decides that he'll take a rest before going to the Land of Lightning to fight the two-tailed dragon at full strength. So, he heads to the tallest mountain where, well, the tallest mountain he can find, and takes a sit on it, staring at the full moon. The next fight 
will be even greater than the last. I believe the two-tailed dragon may even leave cooler scars than the ones I have now. But who truly knows what the future holds? Naruto sniffs the air and smiles getting the sense that another great battle is about to come his way. Because once he gets down from the mountain, Mike Guy is standing in his way. And who are you? I'm someone who's come to avenge a fallen friend. But enough talking, let's begin. My guy gets in a fighting stance, and Naruto shows off his sharp teeth as he smiles. The moonlight then reflected his darker skin and contrasted with the pale skin of my guy. As the full moon illuminated the battle that was about to begin. And this is where I plan to leave off part 3. As I know, this is very far from the canon timeline, but that's what I feel is supposed to happen in What Ifs. And the only reason I came back to doing these types of videos is because I realized how much more I could do with the story and manipulate it in my own way. But the next part will be the end, and it'll be the longest part so far. So make sure you're ready for that. But if you do want me to write that and make a video on it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. As this is Zero, and I'll catch you all on the next one.